Welcome back to the Making International Law video series. In this video, I'm going to explain it on very specific case which related precedence in application of treaties as lax specialists based on the Supreme Court case decided in 1986. As there has yet to be any domestic legislation concerning carriage by air, the legal relationship would be that it would be subject to application of civil law or lax generalis. Regarding international air transport, however, the government has declared the protocol to amend the convention for the unification of a certain rules relating to international carriage by air signed at Barsav in 1929, so called the Hague Protocol, as Treaty No. 259, after having passed the resolution in the Cabinet Council and subsequently ratified by the National Assembly on October 11, 1967. Article 23 of this Hague Protocol provides adherence to this protocol by any state which is not a party to the Convention shall have the effect of the adherence to the Convention as amended by this protocol. While Article 19 states, as between the parties to this protocol, the Convention and the protocol shall be read and interpreted together as one single instrument and shall be known as the Varsova Convention as amended at The Hague, 1955. Thus, Korea's signing of the Hague Protocol gave it an effect equivalent to the signing the Convention for the Unification of the Certain Rules relating to international carriage by air, so-called Varsav the Convention, concluded in 1929 in Varsav. This Varsav the Convention, as amended by the Hague Protocol, now has the same effect as that of domestic laws of Korea. Therefore, regarding the laws of international carriage by air, the Warsaw Convention, amended in The Hague in the 1955, shall have the precedence in its application as lax specialists in the general body of civil law. Let me touch upon the, the other case based on the, the Council Court decided in the year 2008. This is about the harmonious interpretation of domestic and international law and uh, which related with Article 6.1 of the Constitution. This article states that the treaty is duly concluded and promulgated under the Constitution and the generally recognized rule of international law have the same effect as the domestic law of Korea which makes clear the accommodation and respect for international law. Currently, our country is a party to most international human rights covenants having been ratified by the National Assembly and is a member of the International Labor Organization. Therefore, the interpretation of the individual articles of the Constitution must be done in harmony with the international norms set out by the United Nations, for example, Universal Declaration of the Human Rights, International Human Rights Conventions and Covenants, IRA Agreements and Recommendations, and so on and so forth. If domestic laws does not comply with these norms, though they may not immediately be declared unconstitutional, the above norms must be utilized as important standards in determining the constitutionality of such laws. Let me move to different topic of whether agreed minute is a treaty or not, based on the Consular Court decision in year 201. The fact is like that. The 1998 fisheries agreement between Korea and Japan was obtained through the consent of the National Assembly and was subsequently ratified. But the government did not forward the next agreed minute to the National Assembly for ratification. The following case is a decision of the Consular Court regarding the issue of whether 
This agreement is the subject to ratification of the National Assembly as a treaty or not. There seems to be no definite principle determining the legal effect of agreed minute on the international law. In order for agreed minute to be considered a, a treaty, its satisfaction of the legal characteristic of a treaty would provide importance to the evidence. Treaties are not limited to those actually termed treaties, but rather are international agreements concluded between states in written form and governed by international law, whether embodied in a single instrument or in two or more related instruments, and whatever is particular designation, which is reflected in the Vienna Convention on the Law of the Treaties, in Article 2.1. The preamble of the agreed minute states, the government officials of the Korea and Japan have agreed to recall the following regarding the relevant articles of the fisheries agreement between Korea and Japan signed today. According to this, two legal actors, the Korea and the Japan, reached agreement regarding the certain matters. Whether such agreement amount to an international legal relationship will be the dispositive factor determining whether the agreed meaning can be categorized as a treaty. Turning to the actual consent of the agreed minute, paragraph 1 states that the government of both countries shall closely cooperate to maintain good fisheries order in the East China Sea, and paragraph 2 states that our government has the intention to cooperate with the government of Japan and third countries not to damage fisheries relations. And paragraph 3 states that the government of Japan has the intention to cooperate with the government of such countries with fisheries relations to make a possible certain fishing activities by nationals and fishing vessels of Korea in certain areas of the East China Sea. And paragraph 4 states that both countries have intentions to negotiate to maintain good fisheries order in the East China Sea on the basis of fisheries agreement concluded or to be concluded through Korea-Japan Fisheries the uh, Joint Committee or other committees. These provisions show a declaration of intentions to cooperate toward a fisheries order, and it would be difficult to say that uh, there is a purpose of reaching an immediately binding legal relationship. Article 14 of the agreement for the state that Annexes 1 and 2 form an individual part of the agreement, indicating that annexes are integral, the elements of the agreement itself. However, considering that it does not provide for the agreed minute, it would be difficult to say that the minutes also form an integral part of agreements at hand and form a treaty. Therefore, the assertions of the claimants are without merit. Let me move to touch upon the legal nature of the joint statements of the Korea and United States Ministers of Foreign Affairs. This is based on the Council Court decision in 2008. The fact of the case is like that. On January 1906, Korea and United States issued a joint statement on the launch of the strategic the consultation for allied parties partnership, which contained the following. Joint statement on the launch of a strategic consultation for allied partnership is the Korea as an ally, fully understand the rationale for the transformation of the U.S. global military strategy, and respect the necessity for strategic flexibility of the U.S. forces in Korea. In the implementation of strategic flexibility, the U.S. respects the Korea position that it shall not be involved in a regional conflict in Northeast Asia against the will of the Korean people. The claimant in this case, which, who is the member of the National Assembly, asserts that while the United States Armed Forces stations Korea under U.S. the Korea the Mutual Defense Treaty is necessary for the defense for the Korean Peninsula, consent to strategic flexibility in the joint statement violates 
the defense treaty, and ultimately alters its effect, which would naturally violate claimant rights by not obtaining by not obtaining National Assembly's ratification pursuant to Article 61 of the Constitution. The following is the judgment of the Constitutional Court regarding legal nature of this joint statement. Here, yeah, treaties are international agreements concluding between state in written form and governed by the international law. Whether embodied in a single instrument or in two or more related instruments, and whatever is a particular designation, while the consent of the National Assembly to the conclusion and ratification of treaties pertaining to important matters is required by the law, which is the constitutional law, Article 61, the National Assembly has granted this right regarding particular treaties provided by the law in Article 60 of the Constitution. As the joint statements above only contain statements of respect by Korea and the United States toward each other's position and contain nothing establishing legal rights and obligations, it cannot be regarded as a treaty. Even without having to consider whether it falls under the category of Article 60 treaties, we cannot hold that. The Senate Assembly has a right to ratify this joint statement or that the claimant as a congressman or the right of deliberation. As this case is grounded on the belief that the joint statement is a treaty subject to the consent of the National Assembly on its conclusion and ratification upon which the claimant's right to deliberation is based, the case is improper for lack of subject matter. I'm going to give you wrap up of this week's the video series. The curious the approach to international law is explained through the interpretation of its constitution, which stipulates in relevant part that the treaties duly concluded and promulgated under the constitution and generally recognize rules of international law shall have the same effect as the domestic law of the Korea. In accordance with this provision, the international law has been generally accepted as Korean domestic law and incorporated into Korea's domestic legal system.